Welcome everyone to part one of Wall Design for Bending, presented on behalf of Think Brick Australia. So just some background information before we begin. This is the first part to the Wall Design for Bending series, covering horizontal bending. This presentation will go through relevant standards such as AS3700 masonry structures and outlines the design considerations for horizontal bending. This presentation will also go through a worked example for a brick wall. One-way horizontal bending refers to the horizontal bending of a wall given an out-of-plane loading such as wind or earthquake loads. As you can see in the diagram, horizontal bending occurs along the vertical failure plane that results from the out-of-plane loading. One-way horizontal bending also forms a component of two-way bending. Robustness is considered as a factor that ensures serviceability of the masonry under construction. At a minimum, walls shall be designed to resist an ultimate uniformly distributed out-of-plane loading of 0.5 kPa. For load-bearing members, vertical loads applied at the top of the wall shall be ignored when determining the wall's robustness. The minimum design compressive stress on bed joints, FD, shall be considered when designing a wall for horizontal bending. The value shall be determined resulting from the minimum design compressive force at the bed joint under consideration and the design cross-sectional area of the bed joint. Factors such as the wall self-weight and other dead loads, such as slabs or roof trusses, shall be considered when determining the minimum design compressive stress. If the top of the wall is not laterally supported, the design compressive stress, FD, is at the top of the wall. This is shown in figure A. If the top of the wall is laterally supported, the design compressive stress, FD, is at a distance equal to half the height of the wall below its top lateral support. This is shown in figure B. The perpend spacing factor, Kp, shall be considered for horizontal bending. It shall be taken as the minimum of the following values shown, where Sp is the minimum overlap of brick units in successive courses, Tu is the thickness of the unit, and Hu, which is the height of the unit. For stretcher bonded walls, as shown in the figure, Kp is taken as 1. For horizontal bending analysis for stack bonded brick walls, you can check out the stack bonding presentation on our channel. An unreinforced brick wall shall be designed to withstand horizontal bending forces from actions such as out of plane wind loads, earthquake loads, or similar forces. It shall satisfy the following conditions. The perpend shall be completely filled and the wall has to have at least four continuous courses of masonry acting together in horizontal bending. Walls that do not meet these conditions are outside the scope of AS3700. The design horizontal bending moment, MDH, shall be less than the horizontal bending moment capacity, MCH. The horizontal bending capacity shall be taken as the least of the three equations shown below, where phi is the capacity reduction factor, Kp is the perpend spacing factor, F-MT is the characteristic flexural tensile strength of the masonry, ZD is a section modulus of the bedded area. FD is a compressive stress on the bed joints. F-UT is a lateral modulus of rupture. ZU is a section modulus of the units. And finally, ZP, which is a section modulus of the perpens. The first two equations represent stepped failure, while the third equation represents line failure. We will now go through a worked example on how to determine the horizontal bending capacity of an unreinforced brick wall. This example requires us to design a wall with a total outer plane loading of 0.5 kPa. The wall is 2.7 meters high made of standard brick units using full bedding of M3 mortar. The wall spans horizontally with 2.4 meters between supports. We will now determine the horizontal bending capacity of the wall and check whether it is greater than the design loading. Using a standard brick size, the perpend spacing factor, Kp, is calculated to be 1. Using a total outer plane loading of 0.5 kPa, the design bending moment is calculated to be 0.36 kN for a 2.4 meter long wall. The shear and bending diagrams are shown on the right to represent how the values are obtained. The capacity reduction factor, phi, is assumed to be 0.6 for unreinforced masonry, which is derived from table 4.1 of AS3700. 
The characteristic tensile strength of the masonry, F-MT, is 0.2 MPa, which is derived from clause 3.3.3 of AS3700. The section modulus of the bedded area, ZD, is calculated to be 2.02 times 10 to the 6 millimeters cubed per meter. As there are full perpens, no joint rankings, and we are using solid masonry units, the section modulus of the perpens and units shall be equal to the section modulus of the bedded area. As discussed before, the design compressive stress on the bed joint from the wall's dead load and other factors contribute to the bending capacity of the wall. However, given that the wall is not laterally supported at the top of the wall, FD is zero. The lateral modulus of rupture, F-UT, shall be assumed to be 0.8 MPa due to the absence of Tez Tata. Here, the horizontal bending moments are calculated. The first equation accounts for the compressive stress provided by the wall's self-weight and the flexural strength of the masonry. The second equation accounts for the flexural strength of the masonry. The third equation accounts for the flexural strength of the masonry, units, and perpens. The horizontal bending moment capacity is calculated for the three cases. The minimum value of the three equations is chosen. Here, the horizontal bending moment capacity is calculated to be 0.56 kilonewton meters. As the design bending moment is less than the horizontal bending moment capacity, the wall is okay for the given design loading. Here is a design chart from our TBA 04 manual, which can be found on our TBA website. To read this graph, anything below the curve chosen is deemed okay for use. Here, a 2.4 meter long wall using standard 110 mm thick bricks is okay for a given design loading of 0.5 kPa. The association has also curated a design manual that provides information on the design requirements for horizontal bending for brick. It contains a lot of useful information on design and construction requirements, and I highly urge you guys to check it out. If you have any other questions regarding horizontal bending design, please don't hesitate to contact the association, and we will be more than happy to help you guys out. The association also offers a wide range of free resources available to the public, such as technical manuals, research papers, and case studies. The association also has a technical hotline where we can answer any of your brick or block related inquiries. Should you have any questions about the design and construction of brick or blocks, please feel free to give us a call on the technical hotline. This concludes the first part of wall design for bending. Thank you for your time and we hope you enjoyed today's presentation.